This is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN. Technology, news, and information. All in one place. This is the Talk Podcast, episode 105. Recorded Friday, September 14, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, product line manager for emergency services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. Out of the quarter million calls to 911 each year in this country alone, an alarming amount of them are what the industry calls butt dials. This happens when a cell phone is placed in a pocket or a purse, and 911 is accidentally called. It also happens with PBX users trying to dial internationally and forgetting the zero. In many cases, the 911 telecommunicator will call back the caller in an effort to determine if help is actually needed. However, in the case of an MLTS PBX, the callback may not be so simple, as the number presented to the PSAP may not be the actual phone number of the caller. In fact, the caller may not even have a dialable number, or the device may be restricted from getting external calls. This can be a real challenge for telecommunications administrators configuring their systems to deal with a PSAP callback scenario. So to solve the problem, let's walk through a few different scenarios that require a callback. Scenario one, the caller becomes disabled during the call. Let's say I start having chest pains in my office and I dial 911. The pain becomes so unbearable that I collapse on the floor before I can provide my exact location. If the 911 center were able to call me back, I may still be unable to communicate, adding no additional value. However, if we provision the callback number to ring at a security guard's desk and that guard was alerted when a call was made and where it was made from through an on-site notification solution, the internal responders now have the information to deal with the problem and can provide a status update should the PSAP need to call back. Scenario number two, the device becomes disabled during the call. In the case where physical connectivity to the PSTN is lost, either from a device failure or a system failure, that device can no longer be called. So providing static routing to the security desk, again, ensures that when any of the emergency location identification numbers or ELINs are called, they will terminate at a person who has situational awareness of the situation, once again, through on-site notification. Quite often the best solutions are the simplest solutions, and there are less points of failure, and less can go wrong when it's the most inopportune time. This is the reason the VIA selected the Sentry Emergency Location Management Server as the initial emergency offering in the Avaya Select product program. Joining me today in the E911 Talk studio is Tim Kenyon, ENP. Tim is the owner and president of Conveyance Systems, Inc., the developers of Sentry. Welcome, Tim. Tell us a little bit about why you developed Sentry the way you did. Hey Mark, it's good to talk to you again and uh, thank you for having me on. E911 solutions have existed uh, in the market for quite some time and most of these solutions have focused on managing the caller location information that is held in the Alley database at the phone company. And this is what added to complexity and the cost of those solutions. Software applications are literally jumping through hoops to keep that data current, and even under the best circumstances, it would be 24 hours or more before the PSAP would be able to see an updated record. We've also learned that what the public safety dispatchers really need was just the correct address information to get the right resources assigned to an incident. Since we could provide detailed location information internally to first responders, or even a display monitor in the lobby of a building, for example, the complexity of getting that data pushed into the network is eliminated. And at the same time, we provide the situational awareness through on-site notification uh, to resources on-site who could immediately assist with that emergency situation, whatever it is. So earlier this year, you got your ENP certification with NEDA, so congratulations on that. What exactly does that mean for you, and what additional insight did that bring to your thought process in the whole thing? The, the NINA Emergency Number Professional Certification is uh, something that I am actually very proud of. It's been a long time since I've uh, studied and tested for anything, and uh, it wasn't something that was extremely difficult to get, uh, but you had to study for it, and you needed to understand 911 from a variety of different perspectives. It's a certification that is looked up to in the industry, and quite frankly, I'm surprised that more vendors haven't taken the time to establish their credibility, both with customers and with other EMPs in the industry. 
Well, I can't agree with you more. So additional data is one of the areas in next generation 911 that I feel is going to be a huge advancement in how enterprises are going to be able to add tremendous amounts of situational awareness to just about any incident. By having a set of standard data points, specific information about an incident is going to be able to be conveyed to first responders. Oh, exactly. Something as simple as uh, which entrance to respond to or a, a detailed floor plan, material safety data sheets, links to IP cameras. There's a, a variety of different things uh, that will allow these folks to be able to do their jobs better. It also provides that information to internal responders so that in the event of a 911 callback by the PSAP, PBX can route that call to someone that has information on who called, where they called from, right on down to the cubicle level if required. If you recall the Gaithersburg, Maryland fatality several years back, EMS was on scene in a matter of a few minutes, but that person wasn't found for over 10 hours. Yeah, they, it, I think they were on site in about six minutes, and the main reason that the guy wasn't found was because no one at that facility knew where he was or that he had even dialed 911. Right. Simple, basic on-site notification. Even one built into the PBX may have saved his life, but obviously that's something we will never know for sure. Well, this is what shocks me the most. There's so little legislation that exists today that mandates businesses address even this basic problem. And as technology allows us to be more nomadic, the problem really just gets worse and worse. And this is one of the reasons why I'm pleased to be able to participate on the NINA Additional Data Working Group. It's a group of professionals in the industry that are helping define the protocol and the standards for delivering that critical additional data to those public safety answering points, therefore allowing for a much more effective and faster response in most cases and providing the additional information to those first responders, both on site and those that are being dispatched, to be able to be better prepared for the event that's at hand. Exactly, because in Next Generation 911, one, whether you realize it or not, Alley is going away in Next Generation 911, or it can go away. And really, when you've got all of this rich multimedia data, why would you want static textual information that who knows how old it is, right? Exactly. Okay, well, thanks for joining me today, Tim. We look forward to seeing the work product that's defined by the Additional Data Work Group. If you want additional information about the Century Emergency Location Management Solution, you can visit Conveyant on the web at www.conveyant.com. Or you can check with Avaya on other DevConnect solutions at devconnectmarketplace.com. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911, the line is recorded. What is the exact location of your emergency? This is the Avaya Podcast Network, APN.